How was it possible that this research of yours had gone undone for so long? How had casinos that spend millions upon millions on security and cameras and protecting themselves hadn't hired some of the best mathematicians in the world already and said, tell us how many times to shuffle our cards? Okay, I think your question is a wonderful question because it's a lesson for any business. That is, uh, you know, how could it be that a business thinks it has expertise and it doesn't have to hire outside experts. I mean, that, I, you know, it's, it, f well, first of all, this is a case in point, it's true. That is, they, they didn't, they don't, and they still don't work with mathematicians. Uh, and they just think that the bottom line, you know, they'll, they'll learn by trial and error. So I actually know that practically, um, when I was a kid growing up, I knew one of the great experts uh, about casino, um, mathematics of the casino, but he wasn't a mathematician. His name was John Scorney, and um, he was a magician who had somehow gotten into the casino business, I'll protect you from cheating and stuff like that. But also he had some skill at calculating odds, and he wasn't very good at it, but he, wasn't, he was better than the casino owners. And um, he thought that he didn't need to know any math. He didn't know any math. And, uh, and at some stage, he wrote a book, and half the numbers in the book are wrong. I mean, they're just, you know, he says the odds are this. Eh, wrong, you know. And Ed Thorpe, who was the great blackjack card counting guy, who is a mathematician, um, uh, wrote to him and said, look, these numbers are wrong. Here, here is the way the odds are. The bets are a little tricky to figure out, and you did it wrong. And Scarney challenged him to a, you know, I'll bet you $100,000 that my odds are right. And Thorpe said, okay. And then Scarney wheedled out of it. But the, there, the, the people who run those businesses, but I think the people who run many businesses, feel as if they're on top of the world and they can learn anything from the day-to-day -day operation of their business and they don't need to uh, employ researchers. And it's just silly. And so it's, it's, a, it's a nice argument. It's, it, they were clearly wrong, and uh, this is just a case in point. Mostly you never hear about it. You know, that is, you know, people didn't hire researchers and they they didn't they didn't figure it out i i have done some consulting for casinos occasionally they they try to but they're more no oh, i want to i want to increase my odds you know how how should i make a new layout or something like that um, anyway uh, it's a it's a it's an interesting question why don't we feel we need outside experts. But part of the answer is there are a lot of ersatz experts who will say things and how do you know if they're right or not. And also there are people who do mathematical analyses based on mathematical models that don't have so much connection to the real world. And so there's some tension. It's just like getting a good surgeon, getting a good anything. There are a lot of bad anythings, right? And so finding a good one, it's not so easy to do. Uh, Before 1992, do you think the gambling industry lost a lot of money because they were under shuffling their cards? Uh, probably they lost some money because I know that the card counters were taking advantage of it. Uh, it's not only in casinos, but bridge players uh, also uh, knew in a subconscious way. So an interesting thing happened, oh, maybe in the 1980s, I'd say, um, bridge uh, went from hand shuffle uh, shuffling in, in um, tournament play to computer shuffling in tournament play. And the, the, at the same time, the Bridge Encyclopedia was published, which had the right odds. You know, for the first time, somebody actually computed carefully, what's the chance that if there are, you know, six spades of our opponent, um, that they break four two? And, and, and the the right odds were at variance with expert play. And that caused some consternation, and, uh, and it was realized that experts had realized that people don't shuffle cards enough, and that, and that therefore the, the, the distribution was wrong. So I'm, I'm gonna explain with an example, which I think, so bridge is a game, there are 52 cards that dealt into four hands of 13, and um, I'm the dealer, say, and I pick up my 13 cards. So roughly, um, the card should be, uh, you know, four of one suit, four of another suit, three of another suit, you know, something. They should be pretty balanced. You know, we should have about a quarter of each hand. What was noticed is that when the computer started shuffling cards, there were 
too, bridge players felt as if there were too many wild swings. There were too many ten hearts. And they thought the computers were mal malfunctioning. Nope, the computers were doing the right job. What went wrong is that the mechanics of the game of bridge and the method of shuffling wasn't, were forcing the d suit distributions to be too flat. So I'm, I can explain, let me explain. In bridge, if I play clubs, we're all supposed to play clubs. And then I gather up the four clubs. So the cards will tend to group in clumps of four. Four clubs, four hearts, four clubs, four spades, right? And if I'm looking out the window, who cares, you're a nice guy, I'm shuffling in a kind of clumpy, awkward way, and I shuffle three times, not paying attention, the cards will still tend to be in clumps, makes sense physically. So now when I deal four hands, they'll be neatly spread out. There'll be a club, a club, a club, a club. Right. So the, the suit distributions will be too flat. Whether or not you like that story, it seems to be true. When we looked at the actual distribution in tournament play, a thousand hands when the cards were shuffled by hand, a thousand hands when the sh cards were shuffled by computer. The computer obeyed the laws of chance and hand shuffle hands were much too flat. I mean, and, and bridge players uh, noticed that. Now there's a, a question, an ethical question, the laws of bridge are such that you're not supposed to use that information. That is, even though, you know, even though there, you know that somebody hasn't shuffled cards, you're not allowed to use that information. Now, what does it mean not allowed to? You know, it's like saying you're not allowed to think, but it's this kind of part of the ethical code of bridges. You're not allowed to use extra information. You know, when somebody's playing and they sort their hands, you can see if they put a lot of cards at this end, well, maybe they have a lot of hearts. You're not supposed to use that information. Well, <laughs> good luck to enforcing that one. Perfect mathematical shuffles. I'm going to take it any way you like in the pack. So you could say 43, and with five or less shuffles, I could take it to the 43rd card, for example. So what, what number would you like? I'll write it down. 